I will play Smith's A Gallant Fireman, uh, a snare drum setting that I have for Smith's A Gallant Fireman. Now this is a Strathsby. That's the name of the dance. Um, a piper will tell you that it's strong, weak, medium, weak. And a composer might say that it's common time. And a drummer might say that it's 4-4. Four, four. And a music theorist will tell you that it's a quadruple meter. The point is that uh, it's, it's approximately march tempo, uh, and yet it has uh, the lilt of a dance, and it's very cool. Uh, it's a nice style that I've enjoyed. So, Smith's a gallant fireman. I will take a photo of this and post it somewhere online and link to it under this video so that you can see it. Here it is. One, two, three, four. There are two figures here that I'd like to isolate and just talk about briefly. First is the third measure. There's a, a rest on the downbeat. I'll uh, accent it with my foot here. And you'll have to imagine a bass drummer with me. A uh, bass drum would fill that hole. Here it is. One, two, three, four. Okay. I just played it with my foot. So there's a nice little rest in there. And uh, another figure that I'd like to isolate in the seventh measure, uh, and actually the second to last measure of the whole piece, uh, you know, it happens twice throughout the, the setting. It's, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Okay? That figure will have a tendency to slow down, because uh, I guess we have this need or desire to, to make that eighth note triplet more dramatic somehow. And the fact that there isn't an eighth note on beat three of the measure, it's a, it's a rest, that tends to add time, or the feeling of time. Um, so it, it might turn out to sound, let me just take the metronome out of my ear, it might sound like this, two, three, four. Right, but it needs to stay uh, strictly within the beat. Watch your bass drummer, follow the bass drummer, listen closely, like this. One, two, sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's the measure, strictly in time. By the way, I have a metronome in my uh, ear through the earphone and a metronome in my pocket at 106 beats per minute. So let me now slow it down to about 96 and we can get a sense of, of how this feels at a slower tempo and one two three four While we slow it down, there's another concept I think it's important to discuss and isolate, and that is the notion that uh, pipers will play this rhythm, uh, they will practice it slowly, and they won't alter the length of what they call the cut. Okay, uh, This rhythm, for example, 1E and 2E and 3E and 4, that's called a cut dotted, or a dotted cut, or however they speak of it. Uh, what it means is that there's a dotted eighth note and then a sixteenth note, and they want to cut the sixteenth as tight as they can. So this means one E and a two E and... And they'll shrink that. 
And if they slow it down to practice it much slower, they keep the cut very, very tight. Two, three, four. Now it seems strange, but that's how pipers will practice it. Be, bleed, bleed. Okay, now you can laugh at me, uh, but whatever. Uh, it means that the, like for example, the opening measure of the piece, two, three, four. Okay, if I were to play that strictly as it's written on the page, sixteenth notes subdivided uh, metrically, uh, metrically accurate, it would be something like this. And yet, stylistically appropriate, uh, to be stylistically appropriate, I should play it more like this. Okay, option A, option B. Okay, it's a stylistic difference. It's a very small sort of inflection. Uh, it's a change in, in the concept, I suppose, uh, but it's stylistically appropriate. And it helps with the, the lilt throughout the piece. Here, enjoy.